Hello, in this video, we are going to discuss about hydraulic and pneumatic actuation system. It comes in module number two of mechatronics. Uh, in the first part, let us see the basic elements of hydraulic and pneumatic actuation systems. The entire description is based on the reference book Mechatronics by W. Bolton. You can refer the book for more details. Hydraulic and pneumatic actuation systems. Actuation systems are the elements of control systems which are responsible for transforming the output of a microcontroller or microprocessor or control system into a controlling action on a device or mechanical systems. Actuation, we know the meaning is giving some movement. So actuation systems are meant for getting movements. The movement can be linear motion or it can be an angular motion. So based on certain control signals, some motions are happening and that is happened by means of actuation systems. For an example, if you take if a, uh, an automated tap, if it is dispensing water, if some signal is given to the tap so that the valve is adjusted, the adjustment is a mechanical movement or a linear movement. That movement is done by means of a control system. So that is an actuation. Like that, for movement of certain systems, if controls are given and actuation happens, that kind of systems are actuation systems. Now let us see another concept in hydraulic and pneumatic systems that is called as power supply. As we know, power supply are meant for giving regulated power to any device. Hydraulic power supply is also meant for providing a regulated power, hydraulic power to the actuation system. Let us see the elements that we see in the diagram here. There is a reservoir or an oil sump. It's a hydraulic fluid. There is pump that is driven by means of motor. There's a non-return valve. A non-return valve will prevent the flow of fluid, the liquid going backward. And there's a pressure relief valve that is meant for protecting the entire circuit without, uh, by taking care of the pressure of the circuit. That is, pressure relief valve will take care of excessive pressure. If there is excess pressure in the circuit, the relief valve will release excess uh, fluid to the reservoir. There is an accumulator you can see here. Accumulator is meant for again providing regulated flow of the liquid. In a hydraulic power supply, when you hear, you have to think that that consists of many elements. The elements that included in actual uh, power supply, hydraulic power supply are a pump, a motor, a non-return valve, a pressure relief valve. All together, one, two, three, four, these elements together, we call it as a power supply unit for hydraulic system. I'll show you the fu functioning of the power supply unit in hydraulic uh, actuation system. The pump will, is used to pump the fluid, the pressurizing the liquid here, by, that is moved by means of a motor. The pumped liquid will be going to the non-return valve. The non-return valve will prevent the backflow of liquid. So there is flow only in one direction. So it is a non-return valve or it can, it can be called as a directional valve, okay. The fluid at higher pressure is going to this circuit through a pressure relief valve. This valve is meant for protecting the circuit. So this valve is set at a particular pressure. If at all, there is pressure that is built up beyond the set pressure, then excess liquid will be drained back to the reservoir like this. So the pressure is maintained in the circuit. There is an accumulator provided in the supply line. That uh, detailed view of uh, accumulator is shown here. The accumulator is actually a simple container having a bladder that is filled with the gas. Gas is having a particular pressure. Now, when there is fluid coming in this line, the fluid will be rushing in, into the cabin also, in the cabin also like this. Now, because of the pressure, it will compress the bladder so that more liquid will be inside this. Whenever the pressure in the external circuit is reduced, the bladder will push the liquid back to the, back to the line. That means, in either way, there is a regulated fluid flow that happens to the external circuit. So, regulator power supply of hydraulic fluid is provided by means of hydraulic power supply. Let us see the pneumatic power supply. 
as we know it is meant for providing regulated pneumatic power to the external circuit. This consists of a filter, a silencer, a compressor that is driven by means of motor, a pressure relief valve, a cooler, a filter and water tap and an air receiver. When we compare it with the previous hydraulic power supply, instead of a pump we use a compressor because in pneumatic circuit we use compressed air or gas for actuation. So compressed air is de developed by means of compressor. So instead of a pump that we see in hydraulic circuit, there is a compressor that is seen here. So there is a filter to filter out any dust or those kind of particles that is coming into the uh, system. There is a silencer to reduce the sound when air is absorbed to the compressor. There is a pressure relief valve as we know that is to protect the external circuit from higher pressure. So whenever there is a pressure that goes beyond the set value, what happens is the excess air will be escaped through to the atmosphere. This is called as a vent. It's a ventilation. It's a kind. It's also called, called as a vent. So excess, this vent will be opened so that the pressure will be released. The compressed air that will be going to the cooler. We know that compressor will, when pressure is increased for the gas, the, the temperature will be increased. So to remove the temperature, the, it will be passed through a cooler. And there is a water and filter tra uh, filter here. That means when there is uh, atmospheric uh, moisture, that will be collected here and that will be drained back to the reservoir or somewhere else. And here there is an air receiver. The air receiver is again meant for receiving excess air and by using this reserve, uh, receiver, additional air supply if at all needed will be provided to the external circuit. So these are the elements in a pneumatic power supply. In a pneumatic power supply, the elements are the motor, compressor, pressure valve, pressure relief valve, cooler, filter trap and a receiver. Let us see uh, examples for actuators. Actuators are devices meant for effecting the linear or angular motion. So if an actuator is meant for giving linear motion, we call it as linear actuator. If an actuator is meant for giving angular rotary motion, we call it as a rotary actuator. A typical cylinder piston arrangement is a wonderful example for a linear actuator. In this diag in this uh, here, let us see few kinds of linear actuators. Uh, single acting, double acting are a class classification for linear actuator. Uh, let us see the schematic diagram of single acting and double acting cylinder. This is a single acting cylinder. Single acting means there is power supply through one side of the cylinder. So this is a cylinder, there is power supply only through this. So it is one side. On the other, the reverse movement of the piston can happen because of the spring here. When you see the symbol like this, this kind of symbol you see, then you have to understand that that's a spring. So when there is actually the regulated power or the control pressure happens from this side, the piston will move in this direction. And it, uh, when it moves, it will be pushing the spring. So against the spring load, it is moving. Now, when the pressure is released because of the spring action, it will be coming back to the original situation. This is single acting cylinder. That means only power supply through one side only. Whereas double acting cylinders, double acting cylinder will have power supply, control power supply through both sides of the piston. Here, this is a piston, this is a rod, and a piston rod. This one and two, these are the two power supply unit, uh, the ports through which fluid can enter. Now, when fluid goes in this direction, it will be pushing the piston in this direction. So whatever fluid here, that will be going back. So when there is pressure from this side, this side, the piston will be moving in this direction and the draining happens from this side. So the piston moves because of the pressure control between the either side of the piston. Here we see another kind of classification for the double acting cylinder itself. It is a single road double acting cylinder and double road double acting cylinder. As the name indicates, we can, understand, we can see that there is a piston road in both the sides of the piston. One, two, two roads on either side of the piston. So this is called as a double road double acting cylinder. This is a single road double acting cylinder. Now rotary actuators. 
Rotary actuators are actuators meant for giving a rotation motion or angular motion. It need not be a complete rotation also. If it is a complete rotation, we call it as a rotary motion. If it is a partial rotation, we can call it as angular motion. Okay. So, examples for rotary actuators are vanes that we see in the case of hydraulic devices and all vanes, turbines are examples for rotary actuators. There are semi-rotary double acting actuators that means rotation won't be complete if only a partial rotation will be there and power supply to happen the rotation will be from either side then then we call it as a double acting. So that's why it is called a double acting semi-rotary. This is a, a notation standard notation for showing semi-rotary double acting kind of rotary actuator. Rotary motor single direction of rotation that is this is a motor this represents a motor and what direction of arrow only in one direction you can see that arrow is shown only in one direction then it is a single direction motor then this is a bi-directional motor this is a simple for uh, having the the arrow mark is given on either side here as well as here okay and this is a rotary bi-directional uh, motor so these are examples for rotary actuators let us see little in deep about single acting cylinder Single acting means the control pressure is applied to one side of the piston only. Now, when we see a piston, you have to understand a particular word that is front side of the piston and back side of the piston. Wherever the road is present, that part is called, is called as a front side or front end of the piston. Where, where there is a cylinder head, that is called as a back side of the piston. Okay. In a single acting, as you know, when there is pressure, fluid pressure from this side, the piston will be moved backward against the spring load, okay, that is uh, single acting. Then when there is a re uh, release of the pressure from this side, because of the spring load, it will be coming back. So this is a representation of a single acting cylinder. That means a rectangular one, a road and the spring here. In the previous slide, we have seen spring on the other side. So that is also possible. This is another possibility. So single acting will have only one line in the cylinder line that is entry of control pressure only from one side. Now double acting cylinder where control pressure is applied on both sides of the piston. The difference in pressure causes a motion. In this case we won't use any spring because to and fro movements are done by means of control pressure. Here it is a schematic diagram for a double acting cylinder. Uh, this is the back side, this is the front side. Okay, So when there is control pressure from this side, it will push the piston against the pressure of fluid available here. When there is pressure from this side, the piston will move like this. So the, uh, so the to and fro movement are possible by means of pressure supply from this side as well as this side. Since the pressure supply is there on either side, we call it as a double acting cylinder. For double acting cylinder, the notation is a rectangular one, a cylinder and two lines like this on either side of the piston. So here we have one, this is another possibility of representing the piston. So you have to remember a word cushioning connected with pneumatic system, cushioning and damping. Okay, we know cushion means when you sit on a seat, okay. Cushion is given from back side. So when you get a support, you call it as a, you are sitting in a cushioned seat. When there is a force acting from front side, we call it as a damping force. That is preventing from moving forward. That's a damping. So in the case of piston also, pneumatic cylinders, the force that will prevent the piston to go and hit on the back side like this. So if it goes and well, higher pressure, if it goes and hit on this, uh, head side, it can cause vibration and cause cause problem for the circuit also. To prevent that, from the back side, the excess pressure will be maintained, compressed air will be maintained to little bit so that this piston will have a move of backing force. That backing force from the back side is called as cushioning. Whereas when it moves forward in this direction, there is again a pressure happening from this side so that the piston will move comfortably in the, this direction. That force from this side, that's the front side is called as a damping. So cushioning is the control force from the back side uh, uh, and support from the back side of the piston and cushion, uh, damping is a support on the piston from the front side. 
Cushioning and damping will avoid vibration that can happen in pneumatic cylinders. Now let us see a few examples of valves. This is a poppet valve. The valve has a body, there is a push button, there is, what you see here is a valve and there is a spring here. Now the fluid can enter through this and because it is blocked here, the liquid cannot go. There is an exit part also here. This is the exit uh, port or opening. This is a push button that is connected with the valve here through a road. When you push the button from the top, the valve, the ball will be coming down against the spring load. So there will be an opening generated. So whatever fluid available here will go here and will escape through this. So when you release the force on the push button, then uh, it will come back, the ball will come back to the original seat so that the flow will be blocked. So this is the functioning of a poppet valve. So it is actually a one direction valve that is only when you apply the pressure there is flow in this direction otherwise there is no flow. There, this is another kind of valve called as directional valve. Directional means only one direction flow. This is the approximate schematic diagram of the directional valve where there is a flow in this direction, there is a valve or a ball here and that is spring loaded here also. So when there is excessive pressure from this side, the ball will be pushed in this direction so that the opening will be made, the fluid will go through this opening and will go out. So, but when, if, if the, there is a flow from this direction, what happens is the flow will go and hit on the ball so the, the passage will be blocked in this direction. So, the flow is permitted only in this direction and there is no flow in the backward direction. This is the construction of a directional valve. In both this poppet valve and direction valve, instead of this spherical kind of valves, there can be disc or cone, anything can be used. Here we are showing the ball just for the sake of explanation. This is another kind of valve called as direction control valves. Directional valves are meant for providing the fluid only in one direction it will arrest the flow in the backward direction. Whereas direction control valves are meant for controlling the direction of flow. Spool valve is an example for direction control valve. The construction of the spool valve is seen here. Like there is a cylindrical body. Inside the cylindrical body, there are cylindrical pistons connected with the road. The arrangement of the road is such that if there is flow of liquid from this side, it will go here. And if there is flow of liquid, uh, the, because of the position of the port uh, and the position of the piston, the movement of fluid to this port will be arrested. If the port, this, this is moving in this direction, what happens is there will be flow from this side and the flow in this uh, part will be arrested. So I'll explain with this diagram. That is this piston, these two pistons are connected with a single rod if the road is moving by means of some, uh, some actuation, that causes the positioning of the spool. These pistons are called a spool, positioning of the spool. The positioning of the spool can open or close the ports, ports one, two or three ports means opening because of the positioning. And because of that positioning, flow of liquid through the port one, two, three can be controlled. That is here you see the blue uh, spools are in one position. Say if there is a fluid flow from this direction, from this direction, the flow will go here, it will go here, it will go through this, okay, it will go through this. Now in another position, if it is moved in the backward direction, what happens is the backward position is shown by this red line. In that case, what happens is the liquid from here cannot go here because this spool has reached here. So this the movement from this here to this port is arrested. Whereas the movement from this side to this side is open now. So the fluid will go from here to here to this opening. So the positioning of the spool can be used to control the direction of flow of liquid. So we call it as direction control valves and the direction of flow can be controlled by means of the position of the spool. There is another kind of valves called as pressure control valves. This is an approximate arrangement of a pressure control valve. Again, 
there is a flow uh, the, it, in the construction there is a valve body there are openings like this and this is a valve the valve is cl uh, closing it's it's kept inside a seat and it is closed against a spring pressure so the functioning is if there is flow of higher pressure comes in this direction if the pressure is enough to push this ball valve against the spring load what happens is the flow will lift it and the flow will escape through the vent that means the pressure inside the circuit will be reduced if there is a pressure a fluid line or a, a liquid line here the liquid pressure will go here and it lift the ball against spring load and will uh, escape that means the pressure inside any circuit can be maintained to a particular limit if the pressure exceeds the limit of the spring pressure set here then excess leak it will push against the spring load and the liquid will be escaping through this it is a case also with compressor uh, compressed air also if compressed air pressure is if it is higher then it will go through the vent vent stands for compressed air system in the pressure control valves there can be categorization like pressure relief valve pressure regulating valve and pressure sequence valve if excess pressure is relieved as we see in this case by means of spring, spring set at a particular pressure then it is called as a pressure relief valve if you have an arrangement to regulate the pressure that is by means of controlling the spring pressure etc then that kind of valves are called as pressure regulating valve if the same arrangement instead of es permitting the escaping of liquid through the vent or to, to the uh, to the reservoir if the ex the pressure the liquid coming here if it is used for actuating some other device then this pressure this kind of pressure control valves are called as pressure sequencing valve pressure sequencing valves are meant for controlling a second device once the pressure in the first circuit is developed to a preset level so when the pressure in the first circuit is uh, rise to a preset level then that will cause a signal by lifting actually signal is obtained by lifting the valve so that the liquid will be coming here and that liquid will be used for actuating some other device so this is the functioning of pressure sequencing valve what i want to tell you is that pressure control valves can be categorized like pressure relief pressure regulating or pressure sequencing depending on how the liquid coming on the vent is utilized if the liquid coming on this port is escaped to the reservoir or the air if it is escaped then it is acting as a relief valve if the air coming here or the fluid coming here to this port is used for actuating some other device then the device is called as a pressure sequencing device now it is time for a review questions uh, just check you can describe the work of hydraulic power supply unit can you describe the functioning of each element of a pneumatic power supply unit can you explain the working of accumulator can you list few examples for linear and rotary actuators can you illustrate the working of a typical double acting pneumatic cylinder can you differentiate between cushioning and damping can you differentiate between directional and direction control valves can you list the types of pressure control valves so this is a review question please go back and see if try to answer the questions Thank you very much.